hello formulators let's jump right in so we are starting this formula with our slurry phase so right now I am pouring out my glycerin that I'm going to use to disperse my powders so that they won't glop up and become like fish eyes with um, mixing with the water and when I say powders I mean my um, thickening agents so as always, my favorite, we're starting with Xanthan Gum Soft. This is a thickener, um, stabilizer, um, and it does a few other things as well. But in this formula, we're using it for the jelly part of our jelly mask. This is going to um, give a nice viscosity as well as it won't. This particular kind is formulated to specifically not be as slimy and stringy as your typical xanthan gum i would not use your grocery store xanthan gum for this formula it's just not going to come out as nice and um professional feeling or looking in this formula this is my um hydrating jelly mask so i'm also using some hyaluronic acid i am using two types in this formula i'm using your high molecular weight as well as my low uh molecular weight um so high molecular weight uh, hyaluronic acid sits more on the surface layers of the skin or levels of the skin and um, it also helps to thicken or gel water or liquid. Um, lower molecular weight hyaluronic acid penetrates a little bit deeper into the skin bringing moisture a little bit past the surface. So working together you're going to get a really good boost of um, hydration and moisture in your skin which is the whole point. Um, so if you don't already know, we are making our jelly masks. Um, this has been such a highly requested <laughs> formula and I finally got some videos made. I am actually making a bulk order here. I had a customer order, um, three different masks in bulk so they can add them to their shop. So I was super excited about that. And so I said, let me finally record this video. So here we are. And just FYI, my baby girl is in the background, so you might hear her commentary on this formulation. Oh, there she is now. Okay, so I had to go and find my uh, low molecular weight hyaluronic acid because I was not prepared. Mm -mm. Um, so I am going to add that in as well and then move on to my water phase, I do believe. A lot of the next few videos are going to be voiceovers. Um... There's just a lot of noise in the apartment right now, so it's easier for me to record a voiceover later on than to try to wait for it to be quiet to record a video. So I'm just mixing those together very well. You want to make sure you get all of the powders hydrated, um, and then we're going to put that to the side and come back to that later. You can see everything's all nice and mixed up. So now we're going to move on to the water phase. So the most obvious ingredient in the water phase is our distilled water. Always distilled water or deionized water would work as well. But this is the most pure um, water that we can buy. It has a lot of the minerals and other things removed so that they don't affect our preservative or interact with other ingredients and cause any issues. Which will lead to less mold and all of that, which is what we want. I'm also going to add some aloe vera, uh, nope, I'm sorry, no I'm not, I'm getting ahead of myself, that's a different mask, I, maybe I didn't record it, but I did add some lavender water, because this one it has a lavender, um, scent to it. And then I'm also going to measure out my extracts, um, which is going to be cucumber extract in this case. Oh, and my DL Panthenol. Um, DL Panthenol is just overall great for the skin. In this part portion of the formula, you can really add in any good water-soluble extracts, powders, active ingredients that you want, depending on what you want your mask to um to do so i'm also adding some allantoin again really great for the skin 
Um, all of these things help with hydration. They help with um, keeping the outer layers of the skin healthy, um, softening them, just all around great things for the skin. You decide what you want your mask or any product to do and then look for the ingredients that will help with that. So I am getting all of that measured out on my smaller scale because it's more sensitive and then I'm going to mix that into the water as well to get that all dissolved. All of that is water soluble. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and add in, I want to add a little bit of color. So I'm going to add my mica to my slurry phase as well. This is the best phase to add it in as it will disperse it um, a lot better. Or, it, you know, the xanthan gum will actually help to, what's the word that I want to use? Help to suspend it. There we go. <laughs> and mix it in a little bit better. So I did go back to add that. You don't have to add any color. Obviously, if you don't want to, um, but this is where you can do that. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them. So also, if you would like to add something like turmeric powder or even charcoal, this would be the place where you could do that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add in those water-soluble powders into my water phase and mix that in. You definitely want to make sure everything is thoroughly blended. Um, and this is why you need to make sure all of your... <laughs> in tools are thoroughly sanitized inside and out because I just dipped a little bit of that in so I could get the last few powders out um, and I'm gonna just blend that until it is thoroughly mixed and um, it should go clear you want to make sure especially Allen Toyn it can be a little tricky sometimes so you just want to make sure it's completely dissolved I think now I'm gonna measure out my extracts Yes, my mom. We're measuring out some chamomile extract. Um, but again, what extracts you decide to use, um, you can add hydrosols, preservative. Sorry, guys. Preservative. Um, and I am using my favorite, Liquid Dermal Plus. It is just a very easy, simple preservative to use, and it's highly effective, and you need such a small amount so I like that um, and it is water soluble so I'm mixing it in with my extract which I'm also going to mix into my water phase I'm doing basically getting everything into my water phase that I can this is what you would call a cold process um, product so there's no heating necessary which I always love now if you have what I finally um, purchased which is an overhead stir this process will be so much easier but I'm going to show you how I um, blend in my slurry phase which is also my gelling ingredients into the water portion in just a moment but right now I'm just trying to get everything off of that spoon into the water and then I'm going to go ahead and mix that in which again this is my preservative my extracts all those extra goodies but preservative is a must and in the formula, I do give you some other um, ideas as far as like different extracts you could use and preservatives, um, hydrosols. There's just the world is open as far as that. You have so many options. So here you go. I am starting. Um, uh, what do you call that? A cyclone, but that's not the right word. <laughs> but I'm basically just stirring it. A vortex. There you go. And I am slowly dropping that slurry mixture into the water. And as I do that, it is going to start to hydrate the powders and it is going to start to gel up. It's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, this is a little bit less thick than my other masks because I'm not using full xanthan gum. I'm using a little bit of the hyaluronic acid, but it still is going to get a gelling texture to it. You still want to let it sit um, overnight at least to get its full and final viscosity but it does start to gel up now this is where having the overhead mixer would be great and very helpful because you don't have to keep stirring it by hand and you probably can see it's definitely thickened up the texture has changed a bit and it is um, basically the jelly mask at this point I'm just trying to make sure I stir it very well 
um, and make sure I have any clumps or anything mixed in as best of my ability. And there's still a little bit of the slurry in the beaker, so I'm going to get that out as well. That part is a little tricky when you use something that's already got water on it because when you put it into the beaker, it starts to um, want to gel it up. So I'm trying to wipe off as much as I can. And that can sometimes cause clumps. So just be careful with that. But again, if you were using an overhead stirrer, this would be a lot easier. So you could see a little bit of the clumps that happened because the water that was on the spatula um, mixed with that gelling part and yeah so I think I started to try to drop it in but realized it was already kind of clumped up so I'm just going to mix it in it will hydrate eventually it's just not as fast as doing it the other way so I'm going to go ahead and mix all of that in and I'm going to put the lid on and let this sit overnight um and then I'm going to come back and show you just my process of adjusting the pH. I'm not going to go into big detail. I've gone into detail in other videos. And I am doing a dedicated pH video very soon. Um, but honestly, that's basically it. The only other step is adjusting the pH now. Which we'll do in just a moment. Alright, so in this clip I'm just showing you some of the basics of... Checking the pH and adjusting it. I've got uh, my pH meter, which I will link in the description box below. I'm rinsing it off with some distilled water. I'm going to measure out a 10% solution of distilled water and my jelly mask. Mix that up and check that pH. For this mask, I want it to be about 5 to 5.5. Great for, the, you know... For the skin, there's no ingredients in here that need to be at a different pH level. You always want to check your manufacturer's instructions for the ingredients that you're using to make sure that they don't need a special pH level or anything like that to be active or, you know, to work well. So I'm just mixing in the mask here. And then I'm going to mix that together well. I'm going to insert my pH meter Get the reading. If I need to adjust it, then I will. Nine times out of ten, I need to lower it a little bit. And I'll be using my um, citric acid solution, which is, yes, it's 50% citric acid, 50% distilled water. And I just do a few drops of that until I get it to the pH that I need. Every time I do that, I need to make a new solution. I'm just showing you the citric acid solution there, and I'm going to add a couple of drops into the main batch, okay? And then I'm going to mix that up, let it sit for a little bit, and then check again, and I'm going to continue to do that until it gets to the pH that I want it to be. I always suggest keeping track of how much you add so that the next time you make that same amount of product, you have a better idea of where to go with your pH and you don't have to do so much adjusting back and forth. And now, after I have already done that, I let it sit, I am now bottling up. So the first thing that I'm doing is measuring out the portion for my bulk order, um, which she got a 64-ounce um, batch. So I'm just pouring that out. Look at that. So you'll see the viscosity is um, not as thick as some of my other masks. Um, you can't see those masks on the video, but it's got a thinner consistency but it still gets the job done and it feels great on the skin i'm going to put that to the side and label that up for her in a little bit but now i'm also going to measure out some individual ones for my shop i sell mine in two ounce um jars and i include a little silicone mask spatula when my customers order them i am getting my jars apparently because I guess I didn't have them right there next to me. <laughs> These are pre-sanitized and ready to go. But when I do um, use them, that's what I'm doing right now. I do, again, wipe them out with a paper towel and some 90% alcohol. Or this, I think this is 99% alcohol. And I'm just making sure that I wipe them out very well. But I do, once I get my containers in, I do my full washing and sanitizing steps and then I put them in either a baggie or in a 
um, container that has also been sanitized until I use them. And then when I use them, I wipe them out again with some alcohol. And every single jar I weigh so that I can be sure that my label is accurate as far as how much is in the jar. And this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to fill up all my jars, put the lids on, and that will be it. This one is a quick one because it's basically just two phases. Nothing needs to be heated and cooled. So it's really, really, really simple to make and turns out really great. And again, you can customize it however you would like. If you want to make something brightening, you can use turmeric and niacinamide. If you want to make something exfoliating, that's a little bit more advanced. But you can make an exfoliating mask with like lactic acid or glycolic acid or fruit acid complex. So you have so many options from just one simple formula. Um, if you are interested in purchasing this formula, it is available at the link in the description box below. Or and or if you would like to have me make it for you for your business um, or maybe a special event, um, I will link the bulk options below. As well as if you just want to buy it ready made for yourself personally, I have uh, it available in retail as well. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get off of here because somebody is um, getting very antsy. But thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that this was explanatory enough. I know it was a little bit faster, but um, if you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, just say hi if you want to. Um, and be sure to check out some of my other tutorial videos. And I do have some other videos that aren't necessarily tutorials. Um, a haul video. Um, I have some calibration videos for your scale, for your pH meter. Just a few other things that aren't, aren't just tutorials. And if there's anything that you would like to see, let me know. All right. Again, thank you so much for watching. Check out the description box for all links to pretty much everything listed and I will catch y'all on the next video.